So, everything's looking good. Got to go ahead and load everything up and we will be good to go. Here we go. Now, what was the name of this town again? Mas Ila. Off camera, I went ahead and got all the mods needed for our armor. We're now maxed out um, as far as we can go. All things considered on the planet. So, we have got return to Commander Velos with the new threats because we did go take out those Jawas. And then we got wreaking ha havoc return to Major Veer. So let's go ahead and have a chat with our Jawa-hating friend. And then we'll kind of see where we go from there. Hope you guys are having a good Wednesday. Mine was pretty hectic, but I'm feeling better now. Now that I'm here streaming to you guys and not at my work. <laughs> ah, I must thank you for the work you did with the Jawa communications. The bugs you set are already transmitting. Any rebellion the Jawas plan will come straight to our ears. I trust finding the cipher gave you little difficulty. Let's see if this confirms your theories. Let me transmit the code to our surveillance team. Sometime later. Uh, yes, the Jowers speak of spirit wielders, those who possess the magic of their shamans. I assume they mean the Force. Their young go to a secret training ground to learn the shaman's magic. They're building an army there. We must stop them. This shaman, the one training their armies. We need to bring her into custody, study her, learn what she is made of. So I'm going to go ahead and be me more than Threll when it comes to this mission. It's ridiculous to think these creatures could fight the Empire. Not our decision. General Korolak's Sith advisor has seen my report and wishes to study this shaman firsthand. I hope I can rely on you to make this happen. Dragging back an unwilling force user is easier said than done. We are fortunate to have a Sith Lord in this very colony, Lord Biro. Speak with her. She made her reputation taking Jedi alive. She may have techniques to share. I'll tell her to expect you. Because Lord knows we would love to learn some Sith techniques. Alright, so where is this Sith lady? Right over here. And we got the reclamation. We got to turn in all of these quests. Tuck and roll. So what I remember from Tatooine the first time that we went and did this. Um, first time I played an agent. Who was my first character um, in Old Republic, by the way? And with Beaudry. Is the, the quests here are actually pretty fun. I'm really glad that we had Tatooine to do before we touched Alderaan, because that could have been hectic. We'll do this one first. What's wrong, Hale? I can sense your fear. Sorry, my lord. I'm... I'm remembering that time on Zyast, when I was buried alive. That's good. Use that fear, Hale. Let it push you. It's so weird. He's like the ah, nicest Sith Lord ever. Did you bring us the droid minds? I have what you wanted. I sense we'll do incredible things together. Zerka's discovery is out there somewhere, sending ripples through the Force. Let's get the Verba brains analyzed, my lord. Kila. Memory Wipe destroyed the old files, but it looks like the Sons of Palawa bought the droids from Jawas. Alright. Guess that makes the Jawas our next lead to the Zerka base. I'm sensing a theme here. Would the Jawas trade with the Sons? They'll sell their goods to anyone. Mos Ela was originally their trading post. The Jawas are one of the native species. Primitive masters of machinery. They swarm like rats during the trade season, selling droid parts and generators. Then it's back to the desert. In my dreams, I see one band that remains in the wastes near this city. Find them. I must meditate. Fair enough. Yes, my lord. You may go. Show he the Verba brain to the Jawas. See if they can't identify the source. 
They won't have records, but they're clever. Good hunting. Stay hydrated, stay safe, and stay cautious. Maybe he's one of those Sith Lords that's kind of like Dr. Cox on Scrubs. He's a prick to pretty much everyone, and even his own people, but at the end of the day... He's friendly? I don't know. He's He, he kind of goes against the norm. But, to be fair, there are Jedi who have gone against the norm as well. And I guess our Sith Lady is in here. Lord Biro. Of course. Hello. Hi. Commander Villos told me to expect you. I'm surprised someone of your background would agree to a mission like this. The idea that a Jawa, the lowest sort of alien scum, has the discipline it takes to use the Force is nothing short of insulting. These Jawa shamans are simply charlatans putting on a show for the gullible. However, if it were true... Sounds like your faith isn't as unshakable as you'd like. This has the potential to sow chaos throughout the Empire. Imagine if no one respected the power of the Sith, if they believed the lowest slave could muster the same powers. Uh -huh. For the sake of the Empire, it is crucial that the Force remain mysterious. The province of the elite, not Jawas. You think we should ignore any threat they pose? On the contrary, I will aid you in Commander Villo's quest, but only because I expect you to redirect your goals. Find okay. this Jawa training ground, hunt down this shaman, but kill her and any force users you see. Bring Commander Villo's a regular Jawa warrior and tell him it's the shaman. Any studies will prove conclusively that Jawas have no connection to the force. Well, now if we know that we have to have a choice between bringing a Jawa in alive and bringing the Jawa in dead. I'm not going to lie just to serve your political goals. Indeed. My goals are the goals of the Empire. Commander Villos is a fool. However, he has alerted our superiors to this issue and they expect results. I suggest you reconsider, but I will not interfere with your mission. These shackles have held Jedi before. They should restrain your shaman easily. If she exists. Oh, I like that. The music right then was pretty ominous. Alrighty. Well, we will see if we can save the Jawa one way or another. Either turning her in alive or finding some way to maybe fake her death so the Empire doesn't know. Because I am a Jawa partisan. Or an advocate. There we go. I'm a Jawa advocate. That's probably the most accurate term I could use. So we've got this guy up here, and I think... Oh no, we got a cave down to Baba Voza. And Masters of the Desert Machines. We still got quite a few quests in this area. Never mind. I thought maybe we were going to be done and head out to the Dune Sea, but I was very mistaken. Now, this was the charming commander, right? For Major. Look sharp, men. This is what success looks like. An entire exchange operation crushed like an insect. Drink it in, folks. May your accomplishment inspire them to do their own jobs half as well. That should wrap things up. Our Empire's standing will be much improved thanks to your work. Farewell. Hope you all were taking notes. Level 35! Well, before we head out into the desert, let's go ahead and see if we uh, learned anything. Ah, you know what, we'll head back. I'm not really... We can do a little bit of everything. Now the Jawa... Oh, okay, the cave is down here for the Jawas. And then the Masters of the Desert Machines. Interesting.
So we got all of these down here in the southern outskirts. And then I think after these two quests are done, we'll head out into the Dune Sea, which is obviously um, the largest part of Tatooine. That's mostly what it's known for. And we have got Jawa guard droids securing the front. And I guess there's a cave up here. Oh, Jawa wanderers. We will make sure to kill no Jawas. We've only had to kill, I think, like one or two this entire playthrough. And I definitely want to minimize their losses. Whoa! Hello there, Imperial Lieutenant, that just suddenly appeared. Defeat the Jawa Shaman. And they've got spelunking droids and demolitionists and scavengers. Because so because we didn't have stealth during the bounty hunter playthrough, Beaudry just cut his way through all these guys. Just like what happened to the Sandcrawler in A New Hope. But now I can play this mission the way I would like for it to be. With minimal sand gnome death. Because that's essentially what Jawas are, are sand gnomes. Or dwarves, or whatever you want to call them. And here's the shaman, all to herself. She's level 26. It doesn't look like we have any other option, but... To lay the smack down. Fortunately, I think we'll be in good shape. We'll get shield probe up. And she's hitting us with something. Does she have a lightsaber? No, she just has a training sword. That's awkward. Alright. Hey, Oni. How you doing? Welcome. Stop it. Stop. No more. Jawas is no more fighting. For what is strong stranger warrior here to? I will stop this rebellion. All right. There's no point resisting. I come, and no kill people, yes? Lilek, go in peace. Go to Empire. Save Jawa people. Spirits ask this. Lilek, not afraid. Escort the Jawa Shaman. Okay. Which means that the Jawa Shaman... Oh, did the rest of the Jawas disappear? Oh, they did. They sensed that something was off. Alright, well that's not the end of the world. I'm doing okay. Had a pretty hectic day at work, and now I'm just relaxing. Putting Threll through his paces. Are you at work too? Just trying to do these quests while minimizing Jawa homicide. That's what I'm going to try for, anyway. Where'd she go? Oh, there she is. And her name is Lilik. Now, hopefully they don't dissect her. I'd like to think there's some enterprising Sith that would take her on as an apprentice or try and swerve her to the dark side. Slow right now. Ah, excellent work. We'll take this wretch to Commander Villos now. Hey. Talk to him if you want to learn what comes of it. Well, she knew she was being taken, too. That was rude. Alright. Masters of the Desert Machines. This is for the uh, excavation team. Well, fingers crossed that it stays quiet today. It's Wednesday. No one wants to go get fast food on a Wednesday. Right? Speaking of food, I do have some realistic goals this weekend. I try to I try to get realistic goals for myself. Like try not to go too overboard. And my realistic goals for the week, heroic area, 
Jawa Salvage Camp. My goal is as follows. I am going to drink some drinks, some adult beverages, and then I am going to go to a place in town called Grub Burger and get their amazing bacon cheese fries with the jalapeno ranch dip. Because I just have a craving for it and I must have it. Store is pretty close to some churches with big youth programs. I was thinking, I was like, the only way that you would really be able to get smashed is if Wednesday youth groups and whatnot got out there. I am sorry to hear that. Well, hopefully they won't be in the mood for burgers. Maybe they'll go get some Taco Bell or something. Yeah, it's not necessarily jalapeno, but it's got it's a spicy ranch, and I really like it with the bacon cheese fries. It is amazing. Okay, now why are we here? Speak to Trade Master Thint. Hello, Trade Master Thint. Speak to plans. Tell them we move very soon. Quickly. Quickly. Hi. Jawa, I have parts here from a droid you sold. I need them identified. Hmm. Droid parts. Stranger, go home. Go away. Big travel to sand. Long sun suns. Very big distance to travel today. Getting ready to leave soon. Can't trade now. Hmm. Let's go ahead and appeal to his scavenger nature. Look at this as an opportunity to work with the Empire. You might come out ahead. This is old droid. You want to know what it is? How job was salvaged? Big cost. Skill trade. For droid knowing? Health clear path for Sandcrawler. Desert dangerous. Jawa's lip precious. Moving quickly. Fair trade. Alright, we'll go ahead and trade. I clear your path and you tell me what I need. Very glad. Clear path. Help Jawa's. Return soon. Long before long sunset. Shadows grow. Then we give you the droid noise. Activate navigation beacons? Or we could have just fought all of these guys at once, which, don't get me wrong, considering our level, we would have been able to cleave through them. But there will be minimal Jawa homicides during this run. Martinis! That's what they're going to celebrate with when they realize that I've let them live. Okay, is that... Okay, there's the first navigation beacon. I guess this is the sa where the sand... Craw so the sound crawler knows where to go. So they don't hit a dewback, I guess, or run into a crate dragon, which would be the more dangerous option. Crate dragons were pretty nasty in Star Wars Galaxies, but some classes, like Tarascasi Masters, as long as they had, or Tarascasi Swordsmen, as long as they had a lot of med packs that they got from doctors, they could probably they could single tank a crate dragon. I saw it happen a few times. Everyone really wanted those dragon pearls for um, lightsabers and money and decoration and all kinds of stuff. They were very valuable. And we got a Sith making the rounds as well. Hopefully he doesn't swerve us. I've cleared the path. Your band should be able to travel now. Yes, we hear good messages from scouts. All in place. Good trade. We give you droid knowing. Droids came from big wreck. Very old wreck. Lost now. Jawa collectors found it. Kidit, Nabat, and Eva. Wreck was from Stranger's transport module. Big travel in and out of sand. Found droids, bones, salvage. Good things. Let's hear some more. Wreck is gone now. Eaten by sand. Stranger's gone too. Don't know where they went. Wreck parts already sold. Traded. But not this. Take lockbox from Wreck. Very secure. Slightly broken. Maybe you want it? Hmm. 
I'm sure I can find a way to get the box open. Good. Very good trade, then. Take good travel. Fast. Past long suns. Trade Master Thint wishes you well. Alright, now we go return to the captain. I assume that they wouldn't care how we got the information, so as long as we got it. So, yep, looks like everything's done here. It's time for some... Well, yeah, let's go ahead and fast travel. Are you killing Jawas? Well then, I, I, I hope you die. <laughs> I don't think they will. All right. So first we'll talk to our Jawa um, guy and see what he feels about the shaman being alive. Probably a good thing. And then we'll head back to Reclamation. And then I think we'll be able to head into the Dune Sea. So let's go ahead and talk about some Star Wars news today, guys. Um, pretty controversial stuff. Let's turn in the quest first, and then we'll talk about it. Um, stuff I'm not particularly happy to hear. But I shouldn't be really surprised, considering how things have been going. Ah, I'm glad you came back. When my men brought me that shaman, it looks like she put up quite a fight. What have your scientists learned? Every test shows this Jawa does have some connection to the Force. It's too soon to tell the extent of this ability in the population, but the Empire won't underestimate them. I'll be certain my superiors know who made this possible. You. <laughs> That's exactly what's gonna happen. All right, make me look good. So, for those of you who don't know, um, Lucasfilm apparently has made the decision, this was posted on tons of Hollywood uh, stuff, <laughs> Didn't realize there was controversial stuff happening about Star Wars. Yeah, imagine that. Um, Lucasfilm has decided to pull the plug on any of the further Star Wars Tales movies because of what happened with Solo underperforming at the box office and are apparently going to throw all of their focus into the Ryan Johnson directed trilogy set in the Old Republic. So the Obi-Wan Kenobi movie that Ewan McGregor was willing to do that we were all looking forward to and the Boba Fett movie are now, have now been put on Carbonite for the foreseeable future, which um, is a shame, I think. It seems to me like a bit of an overreaction. Like I've said many times before, if they had just kept Solo around Christmas time, the thing is that Disney needs Disney knows like, they own Marvel, too. You have Infinity War and all these huge blockbuster films coming out, and you own all of them. You don't want to smush them up into one area. You need to spread them out a bit. And Star Wars had taken over Lord of the Rings' Christmas slot in December, and they didn't go with that, and now they paid for it. And it seems that they, they're blaming um, the wrong thing on Solo's poor performance. All right, everyone get the equipment packed. Hail, see to the speeders. They're a quiet bunch. Look at you. You're starting to look like reclamation service material, covered in dust like that. Did you track down the Jawas? I was able to negotiate for what we needed. Looks like a stasis crate. The sort Zerka used to transport samples. Won't be easy to unseal, but we can peek inside. Keela, running through the analysis grid. On it. We'll keep the sensitivity low. Don't want to pulverize any artifacts inside. Good call. Sometime later. Definitely something in there. Alien device of some sort, roughly spherical, contained in a Zerka energy field. Blasted odd. Well, let's not go ahead and summon Cthulhu here in the Star Wars universe. That would be awesome, but also pretty bad for Thrall, I would imagine. What about it is odd? First pass shows the artifact is over 10,000 years old. 
Probably distortion. The energy readings are unstable. Give me a few days to pop it open and we'll run the scan again. I won't bore you with the science. Lord Siltha's on a pilgrimage and we're getting ready to move to the forward research outpost. But we may need you again soon. Hmm. Captain, you're holding something back. Nothing actionable. You'll know anything as soon as I do. If you're heading to the desert, contact us at the first station out from Mos Ila. Lord Siltha should have a lead on the Zerka base by then. In the meantime, we've got an artifact to study. I love Thrill's voice, it's just so cool. Carbon scored targeter's package and device. Oh, we need to train too while we're here. We will take all the things. And that is an upgrade. Rise and shine. It's butt kicking time. Twenty one. Twenty one twenty one. Okay, cool. And we also our targeter device is actually fine. Cool. I like it. Getting a few little upgrades. Nothing too bad. Nothing too serious. Yeah, I think Obi-Wan... Ewan McGregor's casting as Obi-Wan is one of the best things about the prequels. It really is. Um, and everyone's like... I, I kind of have that thing that I think that Obi-Wan kind at times personified the Jedi arrogance. Especially in Attack of the Clones. But that was part of the script. That was kind of... That was hubris. That, that was part of the... That's part of the point of those films. But he was so good. He was so, like, a young Alec Guinness. And he was willing to do it, too. That's the thing that I, that blows my mind. Is that he still loves Star Wars. And he's still willing to give it a play. And do Obi-Wan Kenobi. And they're not pulling the trigger on it. And that is a shame. Where is... Oh, our trainer's over here near the cantina. Just think about the kind of adventures that an older Obi-Wan Kenobi could have. Maybe something. Like, what would be... How would be the best way to word this? What would be serious enough? What would be intriguing enough to cause Obi-Wan Kenobi to leave Tatooine for a little bit and leave Luke unprotected? You know what I mean? Like, how... Th there's so many different stories you could tell. I have some information you may be interested in. Speeder piloting rank 3. Imperial education. Increase the critical strike of culto infusion, backstab, and lethal strike by 15. Where's lethal strike? Do we have lethal strike yet? I don't think we do. This concludes our business. I think that comes a little bit later. Abilities. Combat proficiencies. Yeah, Lethal Strike, we get that at level 58. <laughs> so, a little bit down the road. But still, pretty cool. And the Boba Fett, the, the thing about it is, is despite the fact that there's been so much fan backlash, and I've been kind of, I'm really depressed when I go on Twitter, just because the sheer amount of just bile and venom that comes out of fandoms of every every genre that I'm in, and I think it's just people in general now, you have these people, you just have people who are not nice, and don't understand, can't separate an actor from a part, and it it's a kind of a shame, and then you have Ewan McGregor, who is still very happy to play Obi-Wan Kenobi again, and the guy who played um, Boba Fett in Attack of the Clones, the young kid, He's grown up, and he looks awesome, and there's a picture of him actually wearing Boba Fett's armor, and it's, he said that he'd be willing to play a young Boba Fett. So they have all the tools, it's just they don't want to pull the trigger on it at all. It, it seems like they they really want to cherry-pick what they take from the previous, the previous Star Wars franchise, from the previous movies, and when they do introduce something like that, they want to kill it. They want to completely wipe it out. So only their, the stuff that they've created matters. It's... Sad days. Looks like we're out of here, though. To Outpost Varath, here in the, the lovely Dune Sea.
think we're going to be in good shape. Hey, Kath, how's it going? We're just talking about the uh, new kind of controversy controversy that happened today with uh, Lucasfilm. I'm kind of sharing my thoughts on it. Hope you're doing okay. Oh, we're in the Judlin Waste. I'm sorry, we are not at the Dune Sea yet. That is a little bit later. What happened? Well, because of the relative poor performance of Solo, which is really you, which you can blame on how divisive The Last Jedi was, as well as the fact that they had two Star Wars movies within like four months of each other. Instead of looking at that problem and kind of moving from there, Lucasfilm apparently announced today, or is about to announce, it was all leaked on Hollywood Reporters and such, that the Obi-Wan, basically all the Star Wars Tales films, the individual stories like Solo and Rogue One and the Obi-Wan Kenobi movie that they were going to do with Ewan McGregor and the, um, and the Boba Fett movie are all being put on ice, being put on carbonite to throw all of their focus into the Ryan Johnson Star Wars trilogy that's going to be set in the Old Republic. So, yeah. Which is a shame. Yeah, it, it's tough sometimes. It really is. Yeah, let's go ahead and start getting these missions. Teak. No, 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 this will not do it all. I wanted expendable testers. I made that very specific on my order form. Someone spent a lot of money to get you outfitted. They probably won't like it if I break you. Go. Bring me back someone who no one will miss if they die. What kind of Nemoidian orders around Imperials? I am Teak. I'm a sixth-tier inventor of Research Corps 8 of the Imperial Science Bureau. I've just designed a portable oscillator to strip the natives' droids of their shielding so the slightest blaster hit will destroy them. Once I test it under field conditions, it can be mass-manufactured and distributed to every soldier on the planet. Let's hear some more. It collects solar radiation and oscillates it at the precise frequency to... Never mind. You're no scientist. All you care is that it works, not how. Once it's powered at a solar receptor, the oscillator is what you call point and shoot. I will give you the location on both the power station and the droids if you truly wish to test it for me. Charge the destabilizer. Well, I completely understand that they need to hold up on another Star Wars film. Because there's not going to be another Star Wars film until Episode Nine, apparently. It's just, I, I was telling um, Oni earlier, they really just should have pushed back Solo until December and had that nice holiday opening, and I think the movie would have been not only more well-received, but also a lot more successful. Because it's not like the Marvel films. You can't treat the Star Wars films like the Marvel films and have, you know, a movie like every two months or something. People are going to get burnt out, and a lot of people have. And also the fact that Disney owns Marvel and Lucasfilm and decided to push all of their really big franchises like within weeks of each other, which doesn't seem to me like good business at all. But they kind of overcompensated and overcorrected, and now it looks like the the movie that we're gonna get with you that we were gonna get with you and McGregor is you know, lost in development hell, which is a shame. I was really looking forward to I was really looking forward to the Boba Fett movie. I was that was gonna be amazing. Flashpoint, Mandalorian Raiders. More chatting with uh, Darth Malgus, I would assume. Authorization granted. Begin playback. Where's the boss man? Maybe. This is Darth Malgus there to designated go. strike teams. You are within range of a priority target. Clan Varad of the Mandalorian mercenary clans has declared war against the Empire and attacked three of our colonies. The Mandalorian warriors have proven valued Imperial allies, but Clan Varad's rebellion must be answered in blood. For this, 
I call upon you. Listen to the message. We have located Clan Varad's battlecruiser. The attack begins shortly, but there are complications. Report to Viking Space Dock, and we will finalize the assault. Cool. Now, I'm wondering if Mandalorian Raiders is one of the instances that we can do solo, because we, we definitely need to. Shuttles of the Imperial Fleet. I need to get... I just need to get this list here, like, on my screen of everything, all the flashpoints we can solo, and just do them. Hollow Terminal. Journey into Dust. I think this is where we're talking to our little terrorist contact. This is Captain Goma, Reclamation Service Outpost 701. Never mind. It's good to see you again. My team's still searching for the Zerka base, but we've hit a snag that, frankly, we can't handle ourselves. What's the situation? After you left for the Jawas, Lord Silfar had a vision. Something about the natives, the sand people. Mm -hmm. He flew a speeder into the Dune Sea, but we lost the tracking signal in an energy storm. Silfar was summoning lightning. Why would Silfar go out there alone? Lord Silfar was following a dream. The same way he found the lost temple of Zeost and the crystal caves of Molivar. He told me the sand people and their spirit guides were the key. He was looking for some sort of compass. Yeah, per that, that hits the nail right on the head there, Oni. The natives, what are they? What could they do to Silfar? I don't know. They're savages. Still, I wouldn't think they could kill him alone. Don't be so sure. Find the spirit guides and find him. When you have answers, come to our forward outpost. Otherwise, I don't know how this mission can succeed. We finally get to deal with some Tusken Raiders. I got plenty of stories about the Tusken Raiders. This Tatooine is awesome like that. Um... Got Journey into Dust. We've got Ramshackle Generator. And... I guess that's it for right now, other than the intro. Can we go into the cantina? So as far as the Tuscans go, um, you have some amazing, a lot of lore. The Tuscan Raiders, they're named that, they're, they're full of sand people. But they get the name the Tuscan Raiders because they the first documented attack by them was on a settlement called Fort Tuscan. And in Star Wars Galaxies, Fort Tusken was a essentially a an elite zone where people would go and fight sand people. And all kinds of... <laughs> you could have all kinds of fun in Fort Tusken. Because it was essentially a free-for-all where everyone was trying to kill the bosses as quickly as possible without getting killed themselves. And then everyone jumping on, uh, on the loot. So that was always, always amusing to go to. Um... Then in terms of other Tuscan stuff, you've got, there's a story called, I think it's called The Farmer's Tale. Draw, it's called Drawing Paths of Peace, The Moisture Farmer's Tale. It's from the anthology series, uh, Star Wars Tales from Mos Eisley Cantina. Hold on. Thing is, the Marvel movies are all connected, but feel and theme-wise, they're pretty different. Captain America movies are different than Thor. Guardians of the Galaxy, etc. Star Wars franchises have stayed so close to the source material that it starts to feel samey after a while. Yes, and I, I understand that they can go ahead and jump into new stuff. The problem with that is all the new stuff is being done by the TV series. And I think that you can do new stuff without completely <laughs> changing what people liked about it in the first place. And I know that The Last Jedi is very subjective, and I know some people liked it. I, I liked some things about it. I personally... I It is the only Star Wars movie I saw once. And... I, I really don't want to see it again, to tell you the truth. I probably will. But... The TV series like Rebels and Clone Wars were doing stuff outside of the norm. And it's just a shame that the movies didn't kind of take the, that direction in terms of uh, moving off to, to new stuff into new storylines and new mythos. What are we doing? Do 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 do. Charge the destabilizer. Ah, yes. 
Where is the destabilizer? Leave it as right. Oh, it's a computer terminal, which we can't use. Uh, getting back to the the sand people, in drawing Paths of Peace, the moisture farmer's tale, it talks about a very a struggling moisture farmer who, over a series of different events, um, actually befriends not only Jawas but also a tribe of Tuscan raiders. He earns their respect by giving them leaving water at the, his moisture evaporator for them to take, kind of like a tribute. And the Tuscans respect him for it. Destroy shielded Mark V junk droids. Alrighty. Can we do that? Oh dear. You said one shot, Doctor. And a, a lot of his neighbors think he's crazy. Like, they don't want to do it. They, they they think it's dangerous that he's befriending the Sand People. The Jawas, they're kind of eh. And the Jawas don't like the Sand People either. But he's he's really trying to... He actually starts mapping out, um, like, territory. Like, what territory on Tatooine belongs to the humans, which belong to the Tusken Raiders, which belong to the Jawas. And the tribes that he's talking to actually don't seem to have a problem with it. And then the Empire happens and completely throws it, everything into disarray because they, and then the Moisture Farmer realizes that um, the, the last thing the Empire would want, would want are all the native species cooperating. So when he finds out that they were having this kind of like summit or this, I think it's a wedding or some, some events happening in the story. It's been a while since I've read it. Uh, the Empire attacks because to sow more discord between the Tuscans and the Jawas and he, when he realizes what they're doing he goes and joins the rebellion and then he knows that the Empire needs to be stopped it's a really cool story and you start you learn a lot about the Tuscan Raiders and the Jawas at least at least in terms of the old universe okay we can go ahead and speak to Teak which we will do here soon and then Oh, hey, Couch. How you doing? Welcome. And then, of course, if you want to talk about really cool, like, Tusken Raiders moments, you would have to talk about um, Asherad Het. I'm not sure if I got his first name right. But he was a Jedi in the Clone Wars era who was raised by Tuskens. And there's this really cool graphic novel that's or a uh, comic series that's done by Dark Horse that Anakin and Obi Wan or I think Obi Wan was there. I actually no, I think it was just Anakin. He ha he's having to do some sort of negotiation um, on this planet full of savages, and it doesn't go well. And he's having to fight them all, and he's getting overwhelmed. That he thinks that he might die, and then all of a sudden he sees that there's the, he sees this vision like straight out of his nightmare. And this is after um, Attack of the Clones. And he sees this Tuscan like fly through the air and land next to him and pull out a gaffy stick in one hand and then a leather bound lightsaber in the other and ignites it. And he starts fighting off these savages, like screaming the, you know, hur, 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 kind of thing. And it really freaks Anakin out. But you find out that he's a Jedi master by the name of Ashrod Het. And he's a very interesting character. And I'm not going to spoil it. Um, if you haven't read the series, but in terms of if you get familiar with his character in those Clone War comics, I strongly suggest checking out Star Wars Legacy, which is probably one of the best um, Star Wars comic series that Dark Horse ever did, because that was set about a hundred years after um, Return of the Jedi, so everyone's dead, and it follows one of Luke's descendants in a galaxy that is going through a lot of turmoil, let's say. But I highly recommend it. Get a compass from Sand People Guides. Oh, we are smack dab in the middle of Tusken Raiders, aren't we? Okay, there's a Sand Person Guide. I guess the thing that 
that always kind of bugged me about the prequels is that Anakin never came back here and freed all the slaves. Because he had that dream that that's what he did, that he came back and freed all the slaves. And most, when Jedis get those dreams, they normally fulfill them. So I was actually kind of disappointed that it never really came around to that. I figured maybe there'd be something... When I watched Attack of the Clones for the first time and saw them land on Tatooine, I figured that he was going, especially after his mom, you know, dies, that he would be so enraged by everything going on and seeing that he, he went away and years later nothing's changed, there's still slavery, there's still all of that nonsense, and that he would free the slaves on at the objection of, like, the Jedi, where the Jedi would be like, no, it's not time yet, we don't need to anger the huts. this is a... This is a, um, a tense situation, and he goes ahead and does it anyway, which causes, like, ripples that we would see in the other movies. Unfortunately, it did not happen that way. But I thought that kind of would have been cool, like, maybe the Huts or whoever controlled Tatooine at the time had a, a very thin truce with the Republic, and him coming in and freeing the slaves is what pushed them to help, to help fund the Separatists, and I think that kind of would have been neat. And I'm just wandering around here not knowing where I'm going. Whoops. Use the comp oh, use the compass to locate Darth Silthar. Okay. I think he's in a cave if memory serves. Yeah, that could work that could have worked as well. I was always of the opinion that I thought that um Anakin and Obi-Wan should have had their fight by around episode 2 like at the end of episode 2 I I thought the first movie should have set up the Clone Wars and then um, the first film set up the Clone Wars and then the second one has Anakin's fall and then the third one would have been just Vader like doing his thing I don't know there's I kind of think about um, episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, being kind of like Willow as the child's, the, you know, Luke and Leia have been born and they're desperately trying to keep them away from this, like, cybernetic madman who's now trying to enforce the Emperor's will. There, there's a lot of different ways you could have gone with it. Spirit guides Bantha, who is strangely friendly to us. The whispering dust secure the building. Oh, I see. All right, well, we'll secure it here in a second. Bum, 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 bum. Let us take time for a se second to zoom in and look at this awesome Tuscan armor. It looks something like it looks like something out of a nightmare. Very cool. When I did LARP, uh, I, I still do LARP every so often. I'm kind of semi-retired now, but I always wanted a set of sand troop of sand people armor because I live in the desert anyway, and I think that would have been so cool. I've actually thought about getting a really good um, Tuscan Raider cosplay for like cons and such because about twenty. 30 miles, eh, 30 to 40 miles away from where I live is um, sand dunes. And I'm not talking about like, full. I'm talking about full on like Tatooine looking sand dunes. And I think that'd be some really cool photos to take. So where's our Darth at? Oh, there's our Darth. He's behind us. Lord Silfar. Did Hi. Captain Gola sent you. Such a good man. Eh, a pity he didn't send young Hale, but the honor is yours. <coughs> you will hear my last words. I think I actually mentioned this um, during the Beaudry playthrough. That came off as kind of creepy <laughs> to me. Oh, I wish you had sent young Hale. Talk to me. What happened to you? The Force called me into the desert. I sensed what Circa found. An alien power. I saw a white room. With black I curtains. The sand people would know the land's secrets. I murdered them. Stole their thoughts to find this cave. 
I knew victory before they destroyed me. Okay. I followed the shaman's compass, but what is this place? It is a cave of secrets. My journey here was not for nothing. Zerka built its base over a site from the natives' myths. A forbidden land. The paintings in the cave show the way. Find them. Record them. Gola and his men, they... <sighs> well, I'm not going to kill or coup de gras him or anything, so... We'll finish the mission, my lord, one way or another. Find the paintings, but beware. Beware the thing in the white room. In the station. Hey, little Walk Walk has followed. Greetings, program. Thank you very much for taking the time to follow. We're playing some Star Wars The Old Republic. We are in the middle of a cave surrounded with by Tusken Raiders. Oh, you didn't realize I have a Twitch. Well, awesome. Yeah, I stream Monday through Friday from about 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. unless real life gets in the way. And Sand People Raid Master. I don't think we need to kill him, so... Sleep now. And Sand People's Mural. You just hang out there, sir. After recording the image of the Sand People mural, it would be easy to destroy the piece and prevent anyone else from viewing it. Yeah. That seems sensible. Poof! Well, it's great to have someone who would have been subbed to the YouTube forever coming in and checking out the stream. And now we depart and he's going to come up. Uh, he's going to wake up and be very, very upset that their sacred mural is now ashes at his feet. He thought this was KOTOR and not the MMO for a second. Yeah, that I think I've played all. Yeah, I've played all the Knights of the Old Republic games. I'll tell you the God's honest truth. I get raked over the coals for my uh, KOTOR 2 playthrough because I auto-leveled all of the characters, including my own, including Mitra Surik. I think until we got to level like 23 or 24 or something, and then I real our episode 23 or 24, and then decided to go ahead and start leveling. I tried not to do that when I did um, the original Knights of the Old Republic, because I played KOTOR 2 first, and then auto-leveled all the party except for my character, and made sure that you know, you're actually very careful with how we level them. Serious business, how you play video games sometimes when you make video content. Okay, now we need to go ahead and secure that building. I like the wind generators. That's actually becoming a really big thing where I live now. You're starting to see more and more of these, like the real life ones. Um, out here in the desert, which is strange because you figured that there was always going to be oil derricks as far as the eye could see, but I think some um, very smart businessmen are realizing that eventually all the oil is going to dry up, there's going to be no more oil, and they need something to supplement to make up for it once the oil is gone or once they decide to move on to other things. So they're all investing in wind power which we definitely have here in the desert. I think I've been sub since the Bloodlines 2014-ish. Good lord. Well, I appreciate your loyalty for sure. That was my very first series was uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. I'm actually playing Redemption um, here on Twitch right now. And checking out that game for the first time. And it is very interesting. We actually had the developers behind Vampire the Masquerade 20th Anniversary Edition in the chat. Um, not this week, but the past week. And that was a really cool uh, really cool experience to kind of talk to them and geek out over the new version of VTM that's coming out here in August. 
Secure the building. I guess... Oh, okay. So we kill everyone. Oh, that's why you followed. Good deal. Alright, well, they said secure the building. We will secure the building. Alright, make me look good. We make everyone die. Like so. I assume that's what we do. That's what securing a building entails, from my personal experience. I like the fact that you can run up fast enough to actually hit them with a backstab before they aggro on you. It means you can kind of technically catch them by surprise, even without stealth. So what do I think about the new VTM game? Um, the new edition? I am pensively optimistic. Because I know they're kind of changing stuff up a little bit uh, in terms of how the system operates. It's still going to be D10, but like the D10 is going to have their own unique, I think it's just going to be yes or no kind of things. So that is a definite big difference from the last one. But I think they kind of had to do that because uh, Republic War Heroes dog tags. Because VTM 20th anniversary edition was is pretty much the perfect version of third edition VTM. So they kind of had to vary off and do something new in order to differentiate themselves. And I know that the storyline is going to be set after Vampire the Masquerade, like Gehenna happened, but it was very different than what people thought it was going to be. And it, it's very I mean I bought I bought like the Elders edition either Elders or Ancile, so I probably am going to do an unboxing video when it shows up because it it looked it looked pretty. <laughs> Did Han shoot first? You know better than to ask that question. Han always shoots first. And hey nobodies, welcome. It's spot kicking time. And down they go. Is this building cleared yet? Are we Tuscan Raider free? Live through Gehenna and all I got was this lousy biblical curse. Wrong answer. Okay. En enlighten me, nobodies. First implies Greedo shot at all. Ah. I see. So that... You, you're you essentially doing the Star Wars equivalent of the question from Airheads. Who would win in a fight, Lemmy or God? Okay, we got some plunderers. I do like that, though. Off they go. Down they go. Alright, once we clear this floor, I think we'll be in good shape. Because these actually aren't counting for the defeat Sand People forces. Which means they are a different creature altogether. Now that I think about it, I really need to start working on that Tuscan Raider um, cosplay. Because I think that'll be really cool to go to a con with. Have I seen Venture Brothers? Um, I don't really watch a whole lot of TV, but what I did watch of the Venture Brothers, when I was able to catch it, I really liked. That was one of my favorite of the Adult Swim shows. Prepare the ambush. Now the question is, are their Akbar senses going to be tingling? Only one way to find out. <laughs> Just go in there and be like, "Why?"
I thought about getting it on DVD or Blu-ray or whatever the kids are using these days. <laughs> All right, does this warrant Trade Federation music or Invasion of Theed? Sometime later. Ah. <laughs> PCR. <laughs> Maybe some. Come um... out. The wind Oop. speaks your name. The sand would bury your corpse. Hi. Yes. Aw, thank you, nobodies. Please ignore the Imperial uniform, gentlemen. You have asked improper questions. The old man has determined your fate. Who are you? Why do you want me dead? You know the answers well enough. Now it is time to die. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then. Now we make everyone die. Go sell assassin. It's a trap! At least for you guys, not for me. This actually worked out perfectly. <laughs> Threll was in the box. <laughs> we were gonna go all solid snake. That would have been amazing. Most anticlimactic explosion ever. Yeah, I figured that, like, the box itself would go boom. Oh, well. They're all dead? What did you do in here? Forget that. You're amazing. Did they hurt you? The assassins are finished. Don't think they'll tell us much, though. Not in their condition. You look... Never mind. If you hadn't stopped them... They would have come after me. I don't know how to thank you. Huh. <laughs> well. Actually. I don't think you were a secondary target. You said yourself. Look, forget it, okay? The important thing is we're both safe. She's no he's noticing something about her footwork. Let me take a look at you. They use poison sometimes. Even a scratch can be nasty. What kind of poison? Something from one of the native plants. Now, can I take a look? I don't know. That ripple is, uh... Yeah, negative. I didn't mean to offend you. Oh, no, I said... Of course. Here we go. The wounds aren't too bad, but... Turn your head and cough. Yeah, I said sorry, as in, sorry, you can't touch me. Whoa! Now they're worse. You are going to fall. Then the traitor will share your fate. The Lannisters send their regards. All right. Well, I knew that was too good to be true. And it's a good thing we didn't flirt, because that would have... Made the situation much worse, I would imagine. Yeah, but you gotta... There we go. Okay. How do you defeat them? <laughs> Don't give Imperial Batman a chance to attack. Hello? Still alive out there? Hi. One of the assassins looked like you. Care to explain? What? Blast! The ghost cell is very good at imitation. Holograms. The old man is better. Not surprised he trained someone to be me. How do I know you're the real Mir? You could be another fake. I brought you in with a mouse droid. We talked about the village. I hey, King Gaming. Welcome. Tumor. Good enough. Now, while you were fighting, I think the tracer. Oh, thank you very much for the follow as well. Let's meet up before this call gets intercepted. 
There's Greetings, a program. near our man's location. I can make it there. Just don't get killed on the way. Where do we meet? I'll wait for you in one of the storage areas. Should be safe. If you're quick. And if... I have to go. The graphics still look like the 80s movie. <laughs> Alright. So... Let's go ahead and get out of here. We need, still need to speak to Teak, Captain Gola, and unfortunately travel to Alderaan, but that's okay. Fast travel times. Why fight your way through Tuscans when you can just summon a shuttle to pick you up? Alright, so our Nemoidian doctor first. Your device worked well. The droids are destroyed. Of course it worked well. You think you're dealing with some fourth tier apprentice? A few weeks from now, every soldier in the Imperial Army will be fitted with one of these. Promise? And who else did we need to turn this into. <laughs> it's gone oh too soon. Water access panel. Ooh, what is this for? Harvesting moisture. Well, that is evaporator, so... I don't think I've ever seen this before. Finally, and most importantly, Watch where you're walking. Refreshed and sustained by a small supply of purest dihydrin monoxide harvested from a moisture evaporator on Tatooine. Hmm. Well, that does remind us to go ahead and rock out our coordination when we have a chance. Alright. Blood in the sand. Blood in the sand. Don't need to deal with that. Time to head to the next location. And we'll go see the sights here in the lovely Judland Wastes. Now, the Judland Wastes, we know from previous Star Wars video games, there is a Sarlacc pit here. It's It was used for the Star Wars Bounty Hunter game, because um, Gardula, the Hut, I believe, had her base here during uh, the Clone Wars. That was kind of meh. That was one of those retcon changes that I didn't really appreciate. Um, Jabba's primary rival on Tatooine was a whippet named Lady Valerian, who had the Lucky Despot uh, Cantina or Casino in Mos Eisley. Now, that doesn't mean that there couldn't have been a hut. Oh, wait. I actually, no, never mind. Gardula was with Jabba during the pod racing scene in episode one. I take that back. So she could have been one of the huts here on Tatooine, like vying for control along with Jabba, but Jabba doesn't play well with others, and hence she got fed to, I believe, a Rancor, if memory serves. Because Jango made that happen. As a Mandalorian is wont to do. But the Judlin Waste are where a lot of the Tusken Raiders hang out. Um, Jawas tend to assault droids here. It's a pretty dangerous area. This is also where a lot of crate dragons hang out because they use the shade from the mountains. Alright, Couch, you have a good one, boss. Take care. Thanks for hanging out. Imperial Patrol Droids. And there's a lot of quests here. Excellent. Let's uh, do all the things. Lieutenant Whist. And we've got Imperial Reclamation Service Lore Object. That looks like an old school mouse. You there. Can you tell your commander? Oh, you're with intelligence. Even better. A band of filthy Jawas cracked into one of the Zerka Corporation's abandoned compounds we recently unearthed. Made off with every droid in the place. You want me to help you? 
The Jawas may have foiled the ideal recovery of these artifacts, but that doesn't mean the Empire can't still benefit from the technology. Right. You see, the stolen droids activated. Now they're systematically hunting down everything around the Jawas' derelict sand crawler. I've observed their behaviors becoming refined, more efficient. Honestly, it looks like they're learning from trial and error. Very interesting. If these droids are adaptive and self-coordinating, their applications would be innumerable. Scanning the architecture of the droids' memory cores should give us more insight into their uniform design and their individual differences. Can the Reclamation Service count on your support? That's normally what I do uh, when I play a Sith, is I tend to... I, I tend to play a prick as a Sith. Someone needs to look into this. It's unlikely that the droids will stand idle while you attempt to take a reading. Disabling them will be necessary. Just try not to damage their memory cores while you're taking the fight out of them. I'll try not to. And that's our heroic quest. We will avoid that, like the plague. Okay, here's Mia. You made it, huh? I had a detonator prime just in case. I can probably turn it off now. I could do without being blown to bits by an ally. Suppose so. I told you I tracked down Dragon Eyes. Your trap led straight to the terrorist supplier. Real nasty sort named Milo Varda. He works for the local crime syndicate. Group called The Exchange. Yes, we... we've met. Why would the Exchange supply terrorists? I don't know a lot about them. The Exchange runs spice, gambling, extortion, broken legs and blown up speeders. Not a shock their guys connected to the ghost cell. Milos must get supplies through Masilla and ship them to the village. Wasn't the head of the Exchange, um, Davik Kang from the first Knights of the Old Republic? Because I remember uh, Candrus had an issue with him or something like that. We need to know how he does it. I'll pay him a visit. I'm sure he has exchange protection, but his house isn't far. Afterwards, we can meet back here. Or he was at least a crime lord for the exchange. One of the lieutenants or hires up. Not much of an Imperial fan? Oh, that's a shame. By the way, I strongly recommend if anyone here goes on Reddit to check out the the Reddit, um, the subreddit, Empire Did Nothing Wrong. <laughs> There's some really fun stuff there. Specialist Zahn, which is a tribute to Timothy Zahn, who was the author of the Heir to the Empire trilogy, which is one of the best pieces of expanded universe fiction ever, because it actually introduced the Star Wars universe to these guys, the Chiss, through the character of Grand Admiral Thrawn. Oh, sir, you'd be perfect for this. Need a little infiltration sabotage with a dash of target spotting. Navy just deployed the next generation prototype of our top orbital strike weapon. She's a real beauty, let me tell you. I'm supposed to be overseeing test firing against hard targets in the area, but we're on indefinite standby until conditions improve. What are we waiting for? The exchange is seriously entrenched out here, but they're protecting their strongholds with a wide area signal jammer. It means our targeting systems are useless, even the handheld close-up targeters. I'm just pointing out that when the Imperials have, like, orbital-based firepower, they test it on organized crime. I just kind of want to throw that out there. They're, they're doing good work. Sounds like you'd have to get close to your targets either way. Yeah, it's not a problem for you though, right? Once that jammer's out of commission, we can blow up anything we want, any time we want. You with me on this? You could be the first to debut this beauty's ten kiloton wrath. Holy crap, ten kilotons. Or kilotons, whatever. Where should I start? The exchange leaders are the only ones with access to the jammer. Their security spikes would let you shut it down. With the jammer out of commission, you can use this targeter to blow any exchange assets in the area sky high. Hit anything you can get in range of. Bigger the better. Just don't stand too close. I'll look forward to the light show. 
And I think I've said it before, I really like the fact that all of the folks with the Empire who do the engineering work have Scottish accents or more kind of working class English accents. I think that's a nice touch. Okay, that's a heroic quest. We'll go talk to our friends here in the Reclamation. Which is... Where's the door? Oh, it's up here. Well, that would make sense. We're gonna get a bird's eye view here. Oh, exchange assassins. Okay, never mind. The dragon's tail. And where do we turn in to reclamation service forward outpost? Okay, it's gonna be a while since that happens. With the summer steam sale coming up, are you looking at any titles in particular? No, not really, Kath. I've kind of, um... Well, actually, I take that back. I'm looking forward to Unavowed, which is a point-and-click adventure game by Wajidai Games. They did Techno Babylon and, um, Shard Light, Primordia, and a ton of just these amazing point-and-click adventure games with, like, full vo voice cast and these awesome kind of dark sci-fi settings. And they, their newest game should be coming out sometime this summer, so I'm hoping that they're going to be affected by the summer sale, at least a little bit. But other than that, no, I haven't really gone out of my way. Um, I was just happy because I started... Oh, also, cheap plug. Um, if you guys go on my YouTube channel, which I have linked down here below the stream, I actually started a brand new series on Hamrick, which is an amazing game that I've been looking forward to since I first saw it at PAX South. 2017 so I've been waiting for it to come out for about a year and a half and I can't really describe the game to you it's something you definitely need to check out for it it's got a really kind of uh, morbid sense of humor about it and it's violent but at the same time very cartoony and I, I think a lot of people would like it so check it out if you like Tim Burton style stuff it should be right up your alley David Kang was the main leader oh Compier was this main leader. Davit Kang was the second leader. Okay, so he was like the major Dormo kind of thing. I see. Okay, we're on Milosh's estate. Uh oh. Oh, I, I didn't hear anyone come in. The guards usually call. If you had an appointment, you should know my husband is out on business. He'll be back soon. I need to talk to him if it's no trouble. I'd hey, Rufio! I'd have to come back. I'm not sure. No one said anything about a visitor. Who are you, anyway? What do you want here? We're gonna have to kill this woman. Let's just go ahead and, uh... She, she already suspects something. I don't think we could, like, ease her. We'll just go into the tell-me-everything phase. Dragon Eyes. I need to know everything Milosh Vata is involved in. What? Oh, please, I don't... He doesn't tell me anything. I know he's not involved with the nicest people, but he's not a bad man, I swear. Yeah, but I don't care, really. If you don't know anything, I'll have to go to the source. Take a seat. I... All right. Please, don't hurt him. No guarantees. Some time later. Isbert, I'm back. You, what have you done? How dare you invade my home? Let's cut right to the chase. If you want the woman to live, I suggest you change your tone. What does he mean? What's this all about? Shut up. Just, just stay calm. <laughs> it's not the right way to approach this. You were the one asking questions. I was promised you wouldn't survive. Hmm. I did survive. And you're going to help me find the ghost cell. You have no idea who they are. The ghost cell came to me. They offered the exchange protection. Assassins. If we gave them what they needed, what could I say? They're worse than we are. And now you think you frightened me? Okay. Let's go... Instead of hurting him... 
We'll just be blunt. Tell me how to reach them, or I put a hole in her head. Milos! I hear, I hear. I get their supplies. My men bring the crates to a drop point in the canyons. From there, the ghost cell brings the supplies home by speeder. The next delivery is soon. Beyond that, I know nothing. Thank you for your um, honesty. I appreciate that. Consider this thanks for your assistance. You didn't have to... Oh! Nasty. Well, it's not like they have kids. Let's go. <laughs> Look at Kaleo, always looking on the bright side. <laughs> Alright. Well, that's getting some exchange... Uh, you know, some organized crime off of this planet. Ooh, and now uh, Cleo wants to have a chat with me. Whoops. See, look at this place. It was surrounded by exchange thugs. Two for one. Mm-hmm. Got to make it a. Got to make some examples. We're bringing law and order to this lawless dust ball. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, travel back to Mila. Let her know the job is done. <laughs> Cleo's into double murder. Who knew? That's it. If we let him live, first thing would have happened is that ghost would have got some uh, reconnaissance on us. Which we would not do. Alright. Is she here? Oh, she's not here. That's problematic. Oh. She left a hollow projector. How nice of her. We just got swerved. Hello. I'm recording this message for you. Funny thing is, I don't know your name. By now you've talked to Milos. I hope he gave you what you need to find the village. Because I've done all I can. Even sent everything I know about the Eagle's network to intelligence. But now I'm leaving, because I know how this ends. After the ghost cell is neutralized, you turn me in. Well, I had a few doubts. You don't seem awful, but you're still an Imperial, and I know where your loyalties lie. Anyway, destroy the village. Kill the old man. They're not part of the Resistance. There's something evil. I used to blow things up too, but I don't get self-righteous about it. Anyway, what now? We're down by one. Well... We go to the exchange drop point and find the terrorist village. Same as before. Works for me. Let's get going. Hopefully we'll get to track her down. Carbon scored targeter's jacket. Oh, we get a nice little trench coat if we wanted to use that. Now I need to see if there's a cantina here in town. So Kaleo and I can have a chat. We gotta follow standard protocol in regards to uh, cantinas. If there's a mailbox outside the door, chances are that it is the rest spot. But I don't think there's one here. So before we go traveling anywhere else, let's go ahead and quick travel back to Outpost Vareth, because we know that there's a cantina there, and then we'll have a chat with our mercenary friend. Oh, hey, I'm a cell phone. Welcome. Yeah, I think she I think she would make a, a welcome addition to the family. Imperial observation drone. <laughs> right outside the cantina door. That's not That's disconcerting. I am your cell phone. I make your calls for you. That's nice. If you can guess who's been talking to Nemro the Hut, you owe me a drink. From your tone, I'd say I'm looking at her. Bingo. If you don't have a bottle on you, I'll take my prize in cash. Me and the Crime King were wrapping up some old business, long story, but he let slip something interesting. Remember Yuzhal, my arms dealer, comes stalker? 
He's been touching base with a lot of guys I used to work with, Nemro included. Why would he be talking to Nemro? He just wants information. Here's the problem. Now that Yajal's tipped his hand, some of my other ex-partners, the ones with grudges, they figure they need to hit me before Yajal does. We're talking people who should have moved on years ago. Guess I left a mark. She's so popular. You have an awful lot of enemies. What exactly did you do? I'm not going to make a list, but first example who comes to mind, card shark named Tartigo. Not a lot of guts, but he was rich and cute. We lived the high life until I broke his heart. Bet he'll hire some sleaze bag to find me. Better a broken heart than a broken spine. Tartigle card shark. Any other names? Told you about your jaw roll. Nemro and I are good. I'll let you know if anything else turns up. We might actually have to do something about this. Neat. Oh yeah, she is she is definitely crazy, but I think that's why Threll likes her so much. It's a case of opposites attracting. He's cool and calculating, and she is um not. Actually sounds very familiar. Okay, so now that we got that out of our systems, let us travel back oh wait we got exchange weapon specialist and the derelict sand crawler let's go ahead and do the travel actually we got some mail here Lord Barrow get a thousand credits for that thank you displaying all authorized destinations Actually, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't consider her to be goth so much as punk. I think punk um, fits her a whole lot better. I swear I've seen you on multiple occasions. Aren't you on Sean Satil's server? Um, actually, I had... This character was on uh, Sean uh, Satil. Or a, this or a bounty hunter named Baudry. So... Yeah, good call, Kath. It's kind of like um, House having all the uh, doctors for um, consultations and such, because he needs to see, he needs to have points of view that aren't exactly his. Kind of like Watson and Holmes, too, now that I think about it. Oh, it was your agent? Yeah, I actually deleted the character and started a brand new one on this server. But it's the same name and everything. Mess up badly enough that your bosses would assign you right here. Wonder what these guys did. This is actually a really good place to make um, Imperial officers disappear. So I'm on Starforge now? Yes, I am. I believe so. That's the only other server that I'm familiar with in terms of the U.S. realms. Um, so there was a, a um, stormtrooper by the name of Davin Felth, and he wanted to be you know, the best like no one ever was. And he originally, he was going to be an army trooper and he was an at, -AT pilot. All right. So when they were doing the at, -AT like simulations or war games, he realized that, um, he was fighting these training fighters. This is also in the uh, tales from Moss Leslie Cantina book. And, all these little fighters were swinging around the legs and he actually kneeled down so he could shoot them with the forward chin cannons on the at, -AT. Now, the at, -AT walkers were General Veers' baby. And General Veers was, a, was the head of this, like, training camp and asked Devin why he did this, or Devin. And Devin explained that he went ahead and kneeled down because he thinks that there was the weakness of the walkers were the fact that their legs could get tangled by tow cables. And when Veers heard that and realized that Davin had figured out an essential weakness of the walkers, he went ahead and had Davin busted down to a stormtrooper and sent to Tatooine. Um, in Star Wars, the, the, the stormtrooper that goes, look, sir, droids, 
is actually Davin Felt. So he has a whole story, but it all revolved around him figuring out a weakness in the ATAT Walker and the people who were behind getting them moved into major military use had him basically sent somewhere where he could disappear. All right. Can I stalk you now? Sure, cell phone. No problem. Let's go ahead and talk to Major Briga here. It's a pleasure, sir. I am Major Briga. Glad to see an Imperial of repute on this sordid planet. We were so close to expanding Imperial influence, introducing refinement to this rock. If you can spare a moment, we may still have a chance. I like the fact that we're actually getting some respect here on the planet. That's nice. What sort of help? There's a well. One of Tatooine's deepest and most successful. Whoever controls it, controls this region. Imperial Command ordered me to take it, but my men were butchered by sand people, no less. This tribe's so ruthless, all the other tribes pay them tribute. The Empire can't let these filthy savages control such a priceless resource. Because whoever has the water has the power. Or the spice, depending if you're, you know, a Dune fan or not. I will end their rule. Excellent. I can't wait to hear of your victory. Neither can the I. The well lies deep in the desert. Kill the sand people who guard it. The Empire will be grateful. So letting you guys know, we got about 30 minutes left in the stream. So we got to kill 12 Tusken Raiders. And we got one more quest here. Now we're at the Dune Sea. Now we're at where we need to be. Shale Tassau. Hello, that's right. I'm talking to you. I know who you are, and I bring a proposal. I'm Shale Tassau. I speak for a small consortium of the Exchange on Tatooine. They want a warlord dead, and they think you're the one to do it. Perhaps you're not really familiar with my work, or the fact that I shot one of your lieutenants and his wife dead just about ten minutes ago. I guess news does not travel fast. Let's start with a name. The target is the warlord Garbodia. He killed a Sith apprentice sent to assassinate him. And it's costing all of us. Imperials are torturing and killing exchange members to find his location. Now, I know where Gar is, but I came to you. Understand why? You don't want to reward the Empire for imprisoning your friends. I wouldn't say friends, but I owe some people. Gar and his mercenaries are hiding in the desert. I saw them taking shade by a derelict sand crawler. We can pay for his head. That ugly bantha stain is done. The Empire agrees. The Exchange agrees. How about you? You were right to bring this to me. I'll see it done. Good. Now, he does move around a lot. Don't expect to find him exactly at the sand crawler. You bring me well, his head, and I'll bring you the credits. We've got the adaptive droids around the sand crawler as well, unless there's more than one derelict sand crawler out here. Because we got to go deal with the uh, equivalent to the Borg here in one second. Well, let's go ahead and head out. Yeah, he's somewhere in the galaxy. It's like finding a particular needle in a stack of needles. The infinite desiccation. See, that's fine. Using desiccation is better to me than saying decimation and not using the word properly. <laughs> I've heard that multiple times in this game during these streams, and it makes my eye twitch. Every time. Okay, there's two derelict sound crawlers. I stand corrected. Actually, looks like there's three. Maybe four. I'm surprised these... J well, some of the Jawas are probably dead, but... Maybe they just haven't got over here yet, because remember the sand crawlers were left behind by mining companies and the Jawas took them. And we got exchange thugs. Bum 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 bum. Destroy Garboida's water supplies and take his head. Will do. Here's a water tank. Oh! Hi, Gar. How are you? 
and he just dropped in on us. What's the deal with Zerka? Hey, hold on one sec. He's gonna go down fairly quickly. Like so. Ooh, Kaleo actually got that kill. Good for you. Garboida's head and armor maintenance kit. That'll actually get us a small reputation gain with Kaleo. What's the deal with Zerka? I don't think we have enough time to go into what's wrong with Zerka. They're essentially uh, Star Wars' equivalent to the Umbrella Corporation. The Assassin's Fortress, locate the drop point. Where are these Sand People forces? Where's this droid? Artificial intelligence. Oh wow, we actually missed... We missed some places. Hold on. Well, we got one of that in good shape. Let's... Quick travel back to the rec... Oh, we didn't even go to the reclamation service for it outpost. I'm a derp. We're doing everything out of order. Cell phone, you actually would have appreciated it because I, this entire playthrough, I've only killed two Jawas. I had to do, I had to kill two of them to get quest items. Other than that, I made sure that no Jawas were killed during this playthrough. We snuck through everything, and we kept the Jawa shaman alive when we had to fight her. Jawas are like my favorite Star Wars race, and I will not see any harm come to them unless absolutely necessary. Okay, now we will go do the stuff that we need to do. Because we have to test... Oh yeah, we have the um, exchange base too that we have to uh, test our orbital defense platform on and such. Or orbital... Beg your pardon? Hey! That's not nice. We're just going to keep on running through here. Alright, there's another derelict sand crawler. Now, use to scan a destroyed aberrant droid's memory core. We will head over there and take care of that in a sec. But first, we need to get slicers from the exchange captains. Yeah. And then when they're dead, we can focus on using the orbital. Defend oh, okay, never mind. I guess they dropped from everyone. Do you love when General Chat starts up the Jawa rants? <laughs> no, I actually don't really pay attention to General Chat, but uh, do they? Ha are, what are their opinions on Jawas? Is it pro or con? Because a lot of people tend to throw Jawas in the same category as Ewoks, and I will, I will fight that accusation. <laughs> I will, I will fight those charges. And boop. Do we only need one of those? Objection! I have actually seriously considered playing one of those games on the channel, but it would just be so much reading. I don't wanna I don't wanna focus that much on it. I do really like those games though. I can do something with this. You usually get parodies of movies inserting Jawas. Alright, can you give me an example? Locate the drop point. Complete the... Oh, we got space combat to... Weapons calibration. There we are. Recover the data spikes. Okay, so we have to... Kill more exchange thugs. We can do that. Gun technician... They come from weapon specialists, I guess, before anything else. 310 to Iwo Jawa. <laughs> or letters from Iwo Jawa. Wow. That's impressive.
The Jawa Unchained. That's a good one. I'd watch that movie. It's an Academy Award winner right there. Just waiting to happen. You've all been gassed. Now drop your data spikes immediately. Thank you. That's two. Two more to go. The Jawa Unchained. Just imagine a Jawa now with a cowboy hat. It goes on and on. I bet it does. Alright, so the captain isn't. It's all the weapon specialists. Alrighty. Well, we will, ow! Bad attack droid. And you keep your fire flamethrower to yourself. You are not welcome. There we go. Unumas. Unumas. And we have two weapon specialists right there. We're going to throw a grenade from downtown. You don't get a whole lot of chances for NBA Jam references. And there it is. Sabotage the exchange's jamming console, which is, I assume, over here. Am I correct? Yes, yes I am. Oh, it's here on the other side. Boom shakalaka! I loved playing NBA Jam on uh, the SNES back in the day. And I don't play basketball. I hate basketball, but that game was really fun. Tag the comm relay for orbital strike. Chawa shakalaka. <laughs> and once again, I'd have no problem with a uh, watching a Jawa basketball movie. Because that would be impressive. Alright, so here's the satellite relay. This is where we gotta do the thing. Hello, friends. I guess what we do is we use the item. Bring down the wrath of the Empire. Okay. Get to a safe distance. You and me? Good. Let's see what happens. Oh, there you are. You all may want to vacate. Oh! I may want to vacate. I was too close. We will send a medical probe and forget that ever happened. Well, that was definitely the Wrath of the Empire. I guess that was a strong, uh... <laughs> What's the word? Um, reprimand for any non-imperial things that we have done over the course All of this right. playthrough. That's what we get for letting the Jawas live. And you know what? Worth it. That's what happens when you try to look at the explosions, Thrall. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So, let's get some aberrant battle droids. Speaking of uh, folks who like the White Wolf games and such, the D10 system, strongly suggest checking out Aberrant, which was White Wolf's criminally neglected superhero RPG. It's a really fascinating world. It's a very cool world that I would think would be amazing to watch as a movie or a TV series, but man, that's, you can get some super powerful characters very quickly. I actually stopped playing that game when I saw like an advanced power book that had a ton of advanced powers for your characters, 
And one of the powers, I kid you not, is create universe. So y your character can literally become a god. And that just seemed very strange to me. And I got formal clothing. What does that look like? Kaleo's reaction? No. Re oh, okay. Yeah, I figured that would get. I figured that would get negative reaction. Handing Kaleo some like formal wear. <laughs> figured that would not be good for our overall. Oh, the droids disappeared. For our health. I hate it when those mobs disappear when we need them to stay put for looting purposes. Okay. Back to business. Use our EKG meter. And I guess one of the things we need to do is not... Um, oh! Never mind. I thought maybe we couldn't scan them if we looted them, but... <laughs> I have no idea if it would suit you or not. I'm blue. Dabba dee dabba die. By the way, if you've ever played this game as a Chiss and not had that song stick in your head at least once, Blue by Eiffel 55, um, you're lying. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and turn these in, and we'll see how we're doing on time. And we, we definitely got a huge chunk of Tatooine done today, I'm pleased to say. The Blue Chiss Group. Brought me readings? Excellent. It looks like you were able to conduct many scans. Did the droids pose much of a threat when you encountered them? Hmm... The job's done. Easy. Truly. Perhaps we should have left them to mature a bit longer. But we can observe prototypes built from this data. You ensure that Tatooine will hold no secrets from the Empire. Thank you. Science. Rise and shine. And just hit 36. Miralins, the green with the face tattoos. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, the plant people. Aren't, isn't that right? Don't they have like photosynthesis or something? That's kind of their, their unique trait as a species. In terms of combat proficiencies, corrosive microbes. Corrosive dart has a 10% chance to deal its damage twice whenever it harms a target. In addition, con corrosive grenade makes its targets assailable for 45 seconds. Assailable targets take 7% more el elemental and internal damage. I think so. I think they might be plant people. Before the end of the stream, let's go ahead and look that up, because now I'm curious. I, I, I think they're, like... I think the reason that they're green skin is because they have, like, chlorophyll. In their bodies. Ha <laughs> That was great! I can see those strikes come down from here! So could After I. that display, I'm gonna recommend the final model be named in your honor. I'd like to hang on to this targeter for a while. <laughs> Addictive, isn't it? I'm afraid the prototype wasn't intended for sustained use. We'll be collecting the Delta A5 soon to make adjustments based on the data you provided. Here's a little something on behalf of the project. It's been a pleasure. Now, I don't know if they've changed that, but that is one of the agent's, like, super abilities once you get high up, as you can summon an orbital bombardment. I hope they haven't changed that. And the flashpoint, blood in the sand, we're fine. Let us go ahead and travel to the reclamation base. Journey into dust, and that should do it for the day. I could be wrong on that cell phone, but I remember there was one race that I think was very plant-oriented, and I think that's it. 
And wow, we would have skipped all of this had we not been paying attention. Well, I'm glad that we didn't. And unmanned uh, defense cannons. That's smart. Apparently this is the main reclamation base, so it's definitely going to have more hardware and technology in it than any other building that we have currently seen here on Tatooine. Oh dear, I remember this place. We're going to have to deal with um, some very interesting fights here soon. Not really interesting in terms of mechanics, but storyline-wise. Should be fun. All right, Captain. Hail, check on Keeler and the others. See if they figured out anything with the artifact. Sir, I'd like to hear what happened. Follow orders. I'll brief everyone later. You look... Well, you look like you've been to the Dune Sea and back. I've sent for water and Colto, but we've been waiting for word. Any sign of Darth Silva? There's, they're so nice for Imperials. He didn't make it. He fell to the Sand People and their servants. He's gonna go have a good cry. Damn it! We all felt it, but we weren't sure. We're not blasted Sith. Without Silva, we're just archaeologists with guns. Without him, this whole expedition falls apart. It isn't over yet. I know where to find the Zerka base. What are you talking about? Sometime later. Or meanwhile. Great. You summon Pinhead. Brains. Oh yeah, I forgot they turned into Borg, essentially. Captain Gola. Last hail, now's not the time. Yes, now's the, the time. Artifact, the one the Jawas found. It's got Kayla. We disabled the dampeners, and there was a flash. What? Start containment procedures now. We are the Borg. Again, a test ever The imprisoned one will be free. The rebirth has begun. Hey, guitar manufacturer, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate that. Hmm. Tell me about the imprisoned one. The imprisoned one speaks from the white room. We are the manifestation of his glory. Everyone, stay back. You will fall before us. The expansion will continue. Alright, well this is how you get rid of zombies. Lots of grenades. And you keep your force choke to yourself. And shank! There. She's all better now. Ahem. <clears throat> All good. Those creatures. They were my team. Sir, I think Perrin escaped. He was heading into the desert toward the tribal settlement. Blast. We'll mourn later. You remember the sons of Palawa. You hit them hard in Mos Ila, but their main village is just a few clicks out. If that creature reaches them, this could get very ugly. Yeah, because he can turn the entire village. Why'd you say that? Basic rule of Xenoarchaeology. You don't unleash a foreign technology into a population center, especially one with a man-machine interface. Worst case, the technology that changed Perrin could replicate. Every person in the settlement could be transformed. Technology like that could be very useful to the Empire. That's why we need to find Zerka. But right now, that tech isn't in a form we can study. 
Reclamation Service protocol for contaminated sites mandates atomic heat cleansing of everything within a hundred meter radius. Okay. We've got to store a beradium explosives for that purpose. Enough to obliterate the sun's cave village. But I hope it won't come to that. I like that. Oh, I'm using the bombs. What choice do we have? If you're lucky, maybe you can take out Perrin before he reaches the settlement. Otherwise, plant the explosives, be careful with them, around the caves. One way or another, the contamination has to be eliminated. And some bracers. Good deal. Well, you still have Hale. He was he was pretty popular with Darth Silthar, so I guess that's good. And now locate the drop point, go to the tribal settlement cave. All that good stuff. Well, let's go ahead and log out here. I need to check something. Now that we uh, now that we have the question, So we'll go ahead and start a new character and we'll look up the Miraluian, or however that's uh, pronounced. Create character, we'll just do that. And I'm not actually creating this character, I just kind of want to read the, uh, the stats. I think smugglers can be them. A deeply spiritual... Miralan people have a religion built around a basic concept of the force and tattoo geometric designs onto their faces to celebrate life achievements. Social ability focus ritual undergo a focusing ritual to rest and recuperate the spirit. Okay, so maybe they're not necessarily plant people, but they're kind of like a green skin version of the aliens from Avatar. I guess that would probably be the best way to go about that. Um, hmm. Well, now I am still all kinds of curious. Let me look that up. Mirialen. Mirialen. Here, I've exited out of the game, but we have to figure that out before we end the stream tonight. Mirialen. Okay. Now. Known for their spirituality and strong connection with the world around them. Seventh sister, appearances, oh, that's that's canon. See, there's no more information on any of these folks anymore. You have to go into the legacy stuff to get any kind of green. Okay, humans were nearly physiolog or, okay. physiologically identical to humans. Their greatest difference in their biology was their green skin and their flexibility. Hmm, Captain Kirk would approve, especially with the green skin. And they did agility and martial arts. Okay, never mind. I was incorrect. That must have been the different type of race that I was looking for. But okay, guys. I think that will go ahead and end the stream for tonight. We uh, got a good portion of Tatooine done. And we have awoken something nasty in the White Room. Right out of that uh, song from Cream. <laughs> and uh, have woken up essentially the Star Wars equivalent of the Borg. So good times. We'll go ahead and take care of that as well as the Eagles terrorist cell, the elite and everything um, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Central because we'll continue the stream. Um, I normally stream Star Wars on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. So if you guys haven't followed the channel yet and want to uh, go ahead and follow here on Twitch, that would be awesome. And if you're watching the replay on YouTube, um, I stream all those times on Twitch, there'll be a link down in, to the Twitch channel in the description. And like, share, subscribe, you guys know the drill there. And thank you all very much for hanging out. You have a good night, and we will see you next time. Later days, everyone.